Do you want me to start yours? Hey, y'all. Let's say hey, Miss Barnes. Hi, guys. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hey, y'all. Today's objective is direct variation. Um, some vocabulary. Direct variation is a linear function that can be expressed in the form of y equals kx. So this is just the form that you're going to see a direct variation. And when you have this, we know that k is not going to be 0. And that here's an example, y equals 4x. So the k is what's called your constant of variation. And that's the non-zero constant in the form of y equals kx. So in this example, the 4 is your constant of variation. Uh, it's also going to be your constant rate of change, like we've been talking about rate of change. Um, I was going to say something else. Not really. But oh, make sure you understand this is a linear function, so it's going to be a straight line. All right, some things to know about direct variation. First of all, direct variation must pass through the origin, which is the coordinate 0, 0. So if you see it on a graph, your graph always has to go through your origin or the middle. Because we know it passes through 0, 0, this is when x equals 0. My y value should also equal 0, which means graphically, if we're interpreting our graph, that my starting amount or my initial amount is equal to 0. To determine if an equation is in direct variation or is direct variation, we need to solve for y equals, and the equation must be in the form y equals kx. So this means that if you have something with a plus or a minus out here, then that is not going to be a direct variation if it has a plus or a minus out here. So a few examples. Is the equation a direct variation? If so, find the value of k. We're going to find the constant of variation. So in the first example, it doesn't start out with y equals, so we need to solve for y. This is when you would use your literal equations um, lesson from last unit. We need to get y alone, so I need to move my 5x over by subtracting 5x from both sides. And now I get 2y equals negative 5x, because 0 minus 5x is going to be negative 5x. I still need to get y by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by 2. And y equals negative 5x over 2. This, the question says, is the equation direct variation? Yes, it is, because it's in the form of y equals kx. And my k, my constant of variation, is going to be negative 5 over 2. That value in front of the x. Okay, the second problem, you have 3y plus 4x equals 8. So again, we want to solve for y. So we're going to subtract 4x on both sides. And you end up with 3y equals 8 minus 4x. We can't combine 8 and 4x because 8 doesn't have an x with it, so it's not like term. The last thing you want to do is divide by 3. So you end up with y equals 8 over 3 minus 4 over 3x. Now, the form for direct variation is y equals kx, where you're not adding or subtracting anything. But here, we have the 8 thirds, so this is not a direct variation. So the next few questions say, write a direct variation equation given these two points. So we have a set of points. This is your x coordinate and your y coordinate. We need to figure out what the k is because the direct variation equation is y equals kx. How we do that is we are going to substitute your values in for x and y and then solve for k. So my y value is negative 3 and my x value is 4. I want to solve for k, since this is k times 4, or 4k, we're going to divide both sides by 4, and it looks like my k value is negative 3 fourths. So that, now I've found my k. I, I can't stop. I mean, I can't, I'm not done, because the question says write an equation. 
Now that I know my k, I can write it in the form of y equals k. My k is negative 3 fourths x. So there is my answer. All right, so we're going to do some more examples. We have negative 3 and negative 6. You're going to do y equals kx. So we're going to plug in the x and y values. So y is negative 6. We don't know k. And x is negative 3. So this is multiplied by negative 3. So we're going to divide both sides by negative 3. And when I simplify, I end up with k equaling positive 2. So again, remember what Ms. Hantle said. You need to write it in y equals kx. So you're going to plug in k here. So you end up with y equals 2x. So maybe, I just want to show you one more thing. Maybe you've realized that when you substitute y and x in, you're going to, every time, divide by x. So if you use the literal equations that we've done, if you solve for k, k equals y over x, y divided by x, because that's what we did here, was we took y, we divided by x. That's what Ms. Barnes did here, y divided by x. So in this example, I'm just going to say k equals y over x. When I do that, I substitute my y and my x. So this is 1 over negative 6, which can be written as negative 1, 6. And in my equation, I just simply put my k in. So that could be easier for you, but you can do it this way as well. So in your notes, just write down these two steps. You want to plug in x and y to solve for k. Or the shortcut way Ms. Hantler just said was that k is equal to y over x. That'll find your k value. And then to answer the question, you want to rewrite the equation using k. So you want to plug in your k for y equals k x. All right, so this example. Determine if the table represents a direct variation. If yes, write an equation. And so we need to find k. Again, k is equal to y over x. So if you're given a table, the way you need to determine if this is a direct variation or not is you have to figure out are all the k's the same for all of these points. So what we need to do is we are going to make a third column. This is just my opinion. I think this is going to help keep it all kind of together. We're going to make a third column, and we're going to call this y over x because this is k. So when you look at it, you have your x and your y values. So y over x would be 2.25 over negative 3, negative 0.75 over 1, negative 3 over 4, and negative 4.5 over 6. So now we have y over x in all of these situations, y over x, y over x, y over x, to determine our k. Now remember, though, if we go back to what we learned in the last unit, what is y over x? That's your dependent over your independent. So we talked about this being the rate of change. So right now we can't determine if they're the same because all of the denominators are different. So we actually need to find the average rate of change. Change. So when Ms. Hantler finishes this, we're finding the average rate of change that weighs all out of the same unit. And if you were to type these in a calculator or simplify these, they would all equal negative 0.75, which means that all of these k's are the same, which means it's a constant, which that's the definition. It's the constant of variation. And since all of these k's are the same, then you would write it, yes, this is, does make a direct variation, and it would be y equals negative 0.75x as your equation. All right, so let's do another one. Yeah. Hmm? Okay, so I'm going to find k. That's what I'm looking for. So I'm going to do y over x for all of them. And then, because they all have different denominators, I need to determine, are all of the k's the same? Are they all constant? So I have negative 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 half, 1 half. So I can tell right here that there is something wrong. Negative 0 0.5, 0 0.25, and then these are 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So the answer is no. This is not a direct variation. 
because my K is not constant. I don't have the same K going throughout. So let's tie this all in. What this means is that our graph is not changing the same way if we were to graph these points. It's not going to make a straight line through the origin because the rate of change is not the same every time. Constant means it has to be the same every time. So let's do some applications, some word problems. All right, so the first one is y varies directly with x. If x equals 3 and y equals 2, we want to find the y value when x equals 6. Now, there's a shorthand way to do this. If we know something varies directly, we can write a proportion. Di varying directly means it's y over x. So you can solve it by doing a proportion, y over x equals y over x. So what is the y value in the first thing? It's 2 over 3 equals, we don't know y, over 6. So 2 times 6, we're going to cross multiply, it's 12, equals 3y. And then you just solve for y by dividing by 3. So y is going to equal 4. Alright, the amount of money raised at a fundraiser varies directly to the number of attendees. So again, we have that phrase, varies directly with the number of attendees. That should make sense. The more people that come, the more money you're going to raise. If five people raise $100, how much money can be expected if 60 people attend? So Ms. Barnes is writing in to kind of help you. When we're talking about um, X and Y values, you're going to go back to what you learned about independent and dependent. The independent, the X value, the X axis is going to be the number of people. The number of people is going to determine the money raised. The money is dependent upon the number of people. So we can do another proportion because it is directly varies. And it says if five people, so this is our X, so if five people raise $100, then how much money can be raised if 60 people attend? Um, so you can set up and solve that proportion, 6,000 divided by 5. And we would expect to have $1,200 if 60 people attend our fundraiser. So again, we set it up. The dependent variable on top, the independent variable on bottom, just like we've done rate of change, and using our proportion. Oh, that's it. All right, we'll practice more. <laughs>